What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas here, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.2 it's a 1v1 replay between good and evil on the classical map Forts of Aizen, the red Isengard player Zemix facing against the white Rohan player Rangel, just like in the films you know. The Riddermark faction against the white hand of the white wizard Sariman. So he's going to use one of the peasants to capture this farm behind. And this peasant is moving to the top side, and Hobbit, married up Brandybok, is going to join him. In the meantime, the Uruks are on the hunt. They are looking for some peasants. Will they find them? I think so. The vision from Isengard will be this. Okay, so he was able to see them. The peasants, they don't stand a chance, and they will get slaughtered. But in the meantime, the Hobbit is being unseen. He will make it to this location. The Lumber Mill Worker wasn't captured in this one until now. The second Uruk is leading forward. Warchan is going to be used because it's a 2v1 situation. In a 1v1 situation, you don't need to use Warchant because Uruks are the strongest swordmen in the game. But in a 2v2, a 2v1 situation, you need, un you know, unless he doesn't want to fight you. But if you don't Warchant, he will turn and fight. So the Hobbit is going to be quite annoying here. Each Worker is so important, you know, and they cost 25 each. So. But the peasants are gone now, and the Uruk might be able to bully this peasant. Uh, not peasant. It's a peasant hero, though. Mary. The echo from Isengard is not looking that good, but he has, of course, multiple Uruks upon the field. So what I would like to do here is I would like to creep. Because I would not go for the harassment against Rohan. When you play against Gondor, it's good to go for harassment to destroy his farms. But against Rohan, it's kind of tricky, because Rohan has the chance to recruit additional peasants, and they can even repair structures. So it might take you a long time. Maybe if you are unlucky, you can't even destroy it. And also Rohan is a cheap stable. So in normal games, Rohan will be able to get horses way faster on the field compared to Gondor. But let's see. So he's going to pressure this. The good thing is if he can destroy this, the Rohirrim are going to be way more expensive because the farm is giving Rohan player the wood bonus or the food bonus rather, making his Rohirrim cheaper. Hobbit is still remaining on the field. The host player of this game is Rangel. So it's also very important because, you know, Rohan, oh, he wasn't able to hide. Cloak has a long cooldown, 15 seconds. So 15 seconds he needs to kite, which is easier said than done. And in those situations, you want to actually put the workers on him. He's microing with the Mary. Actually dealing great amount of economical damage. Yes, he won't be able to destroy the settlement. He will die. Oh, <laughs> close. Nice micro. I like it, though. And one more peasant was able to sneak. It's a delete uh, peasant rush. I like this. In the meantime, Rohan player lost both the farms, and his Rohirrim are going to cost now 570. It's actually a lot of money for Rohan, and he also is using the first Rohirrim to defend this. He will actually be forced to go back to the well to heal up, because Uruks with the, you know, shield wall formation and Warchant are too tanky. And the well is building up. That's going to be good. Almost level 2 though, that's good. And Rohan is almost a power point collected already. So Isengard, you don't need the Tainted Land against Rohan. And you can go directly to the industry, which also, by the way, is really important in this matchup. Because again, against Rohan, you don't need only pikemen. Against Gondor, in normal games, you can spam pikemen and it will be just good enough. But against Rohan, you can't do this. You need war riders, you need them. And the second Rohirrim is going to find those Uruks, hey. I mean, destroy this one first. I don't know if, I, if he was able to see them, but they are hiding at the corner. It's free experience and free power points. You don't want to miss that. So I would go directly to this location to get them almost to level 2. Warchan is on cooldown. The base of Isengard is still not looking very good, but it's hopefully about to be changed. And Rohan didn't even capture this one back yet, and Isengard is getting free money. The base from Rohan is also not looking very good. He went for a Rohirrim number 3 and demolished this table right after. I mean, I don't like to do this, you know, I, I like to do this when I have it to level 2, the stable, and when I capture the horseman shields. Because now, if he will rebuild the stable, he still needs to, you know, recruit 3 or no, 4 Rohirrim in total to get it to level 2, which is going to be kind of time consuming. And with that being said, the horseman shields are going to be super delete. The pikes, they will be sent to the creep. In 2.22, they can creep solo, but it's of course going to be kind of... You still lose a lot of units, but you can't do this now. Of course, Rohan's power strength is to recruit peasants from the farms, and they are going to be bullying those 
Pikeman. Micro, 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 micro. I think that wasn't paying, paying attention. It's beautiful trample. And the peasant should be able to handle the rest. Map control is looking amazing for Rohan. And he's creeping quite a lot. So with that being said, he has two power points in his bank. And he needs only three to unlock the Alvin Ally special summon. Which can of course be super impactful. What I like to do when I play Rohan in this situation. When I get close to the Alvin Allies, I like to recruit Theory. So... And of course, I mean, Rohan is kind of poor, so he needs to go for armory and stuff like this. But then, when you get to this point, you recruit Theorin and you place the Elven allies right here or here, right in front of the Uruk pit, and you put Theorin next to them, so they deal additional damage and become more tanky. And you can crush every pikeman with the leadership of Theorin in a second and a half. Even with Warchant, they don't stand a chance. So peasants are sleeping. Draft is available. Should be using it. They are undrafted, as you can see and tell. But that's about to be changed. And it feels like Rohan is taking every single creep on this map. Every single one of them. Besides this one. And he went for Theodore indeed. Almost 3 power points. It's going to be unlocked after he creeps this one. He can also try to leave this to Theodore. So Isengard has no presence on the map. And this is because of the start. Because he wasn't creeping. Yes, he was actually kind of putting Rohan behind. But he wasn't getting much more out of it for himself either. There comes the Alvin Allies special summon. The pikes, they will get slaughtered. Of course, as expected. So, it looks like the first Rohirrim, or the first elf summon, won't be used for offensive purposes. It's more like a map control kind of thing. Isengard needs to be careful. And look at this. And from one level, level one to almost level three. So level four is the biggest power spike we are looking for for the King of Rohan. The second he unlocks that, he will be unlocking the glorious charge. The Berserker is hitting like an absolute track, slaughtering those peasants. And he will also be able to slaughter them, no problem. He has splash damage, so he's indeed able to hit more than one target at the same time if they are clumped. So for that reason, Berserker, extremely strong early mid game unit of course you can't buy heavy armor on them they're kind of squishy and in late game they will fall off so he went for the uh, blades first i like to go always for heavy armor first always like there is no exception it's cheaper on the horses and it's better for it for its survivability so it makes you tankier so and theory has to be careful i i actually not really because there is no pikeman backup for lourdes and he's only level one so you need to be level 3 to be threatening against heroes. So you can solo them. You cripple, you draw your sword, you use carnage, and you go all in. So this Rohan is, is kind of playing the slow game in this game. Uh, he has like a huge advantage, but he... I mean, this is more like a late game situation. But for late game, you also need actually Eoma. And Isengard never went for the Vault Pit. Which is the main reason why he has no map control dominance in this game. So you can see the importance of the Vault Pit for the, for the Isengard faction and why it's so important. Because, you know, of course you can fight against Rohirrim now, but you could do this way earlier. With the Vorchan and Palantir, you could actually have like a really big impact on the map and a lot of pressure on your opponent. Because he has to be careful about your Palantir. So it, it will make your Warcriders faster compared to Rohirrim. And if he doesn't pay attention, you will lose them. So Pikes still countering. That's a good combo too, Berserker and Pikeman combo. But of course, it's not as significant as the combination. Oh, be careful. Theorin King, Theorin King! He will get pinned. There comes the Vorch and the peasants couldn't make it out. There is, there is going to be no down for man. Theorin King stands alone. <laughs> Indeed, he is standing alone. I hope he will leave the last hit to Lourdes. Smart, very smart. Rohan could go for the heal and bully him a little bit, but he won't do this. Lords gets now level 3, that means every single time from this moment on, if Lords will be able to cripple any hero beside Aragorn, of course, Aragorn is a fighter, they can fight you back, but beside Aragorn and Gimli, he will cripple them and solo kill them every single time. And also, this makes him extremely tanky, and extremely, you know, strong against horses. You can see in the situation. The Isengard has not many towers, but the armory is now upgraded, so it's, it's going to be able to shoot. But, you know, imagine in this situation having horseman shields. It would give you additionally to your heavy armors, increased armor, another 75% armor against arrows. Lords getting more EXP. 
Killing peasants, level 5 is the next power spike we are looking for for the Isengard hero. The furnaces are getting slaughtered by the Rohirrim. And also, smart move with tall crown stands. I like that actually. So, this way you can make sure that they are not randomly riding into the pikemen. So, I also need to get used more to the battle stands formation. I'm not. I'm never using them actually, you know, unless I'm playing with a drummer troll for example. Then I use it so drummer troll doesn't attack. But in most cases, I think we can work around the battle senses way more often. Even though it doesn't give you any stats in terms of damage and tankiness, uh, but it actually gives you the chance to not, you know, when you don't pay attention to them, they don't randomly ride into pikemen. So, Rohan is now making combos. Theodin will be revived. He's on, still only level 2. It will take you one minute to get him back, but he also goes for Aragorn at the same time. So he has the power points for the Anduri Sword. That's gonna be the Elven Allies special summon for the second time in this game to hunt some more pikemen. And Rohan has been doing a good job in this game keeping the map control. I think he never lost this farm after the first time he lost to the Uruks. So, and again, the main reason for this is because no walker areas, no mobility, and not enough pressure on the map. Level 5 Rohirrim are hitting very hard. Very hard. Aragorn has been recruited. He has the power points for Andril and for the heal. Andril will make Aragorn extremely tanky. And with the heal from your spellbook plus the Atelas from Aragorn's abilities, he will be, you know, like a super villain for Isengard. And there is only a, one answer. And you need to get for Saruman. And he has the money for Saruman indeed, almost. Lords showing his quality, getting level 5. That's big. Oh, that was close to. You can't fight Lourdes. Lourdes is like a small Aragorn with the, you know, but he's only threatening if he has the carnage, which kind of is like a very tricky thing. It gives you inc a lot of damage, a lot of attack speed. Uh, for me personally, it's, it's more than 100 percent, definitely. No upgrades for the Isengard, but he's going for Saruman. Now, Saruman is a very strong hero. And he's as fast as Aragorn. It means as long as he keeps running away from Aragorn, Aragorn can't catch up to him. But if Aragorn ever catches up to him, and it's victory might be attained. And he's so fast. He's way faster than combos. Watch this. Doom. Oh boy, son. I mean, dude, you gotta love Saruman. And also the new edit sound effect, you know, like this. Like in the films, you know? I like it. Because Isengard is this outpost under this control, no crossbow man inside the outpost, but there is a pikeman protecting this area. And Rohan is spamming more horses. I like the way that he's splitting up the army. He's making infantry and cavalry. So that's like a perfect combination. Now he's finding the transition into the Alvin warriors. But again, without the leadership of Legolas, they won't be that strong. But they still do have the leadership from Aragorn, the king of Gondor. And of course, the king of Rohan theory, who is actually holding his distance from Lourdes as far as he potentially can. That was really lucky for Isengard, uh, for, uh, for Rohan, I mean. Outpost will remain, but took a lot of damage. So Saruman should be using this the second it's available. It's free XP. Every one minute and 30 seconds, you can give levels, 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 and you can stall, you know, because you get stronger every one minute and 30 seconds. Your opponent can't because his Theodine is not level five just yet. So that's gonna kind of save you the banner cost, okay? So, two combos. Remember, Lourdes has leadership. He's level 5. And Saruman has leadership from the moment he joins the battlefield. So, and he has 5 power points in his bank too. So, he needs only 2 more power points for unlocking the Freezing Ring. Okay, but there comes the Alvin army. Elves are way more mobile than Isengard combos. So, with that being said, they have like the, you know, hit and run potential. Especially in this situation in which Rohan is the one who's attacking... This kite potential is going to be very important. But you don't want to ride into them. Beautiful dodge, actually. I don't know if it was intended or not. But it's Lourdes. Saruman getting chunked. Oh boy, you see? He's strong, but he's not tanky. Lourdes has to come to this location. ESCP. Lourdes is here. Should be crippling Aragorn, so he will stop him. He missed the warm tongue. Oh, the army from Rohan is so strong, actually. The furnace are not level 3 yet, that's the problem. Ooh, don't die! Oh, this guy is playing with fire! Level 6 lords, it's gonna unlock the pillage. So even more money. Elves are actually destroying buildings, they have so much more DPS in the situation. 
Lourdes is finally here. Uh, don't go too far. He's always trying to cripple, but in most situations you don't need to uh, cri cripple. He crippled Aragorn. There comes the freezing green. That's gonna negate all the leadership bonuses, but Isengard's army is getting heavily outnumbered. Imagine Vogue Riders here in a situation. You know, now you can't you can see it, but when you trample with Vortex, the elves can switch to the sword mode. That's true, but as long as they are fighting with swords, they can't shoot you back at your combos. So it's like the mix, the mix of armies. Vortex for the engage, force your opponent to switch to the sword formation, and your combos in the meantime keep shooting from a long distance and out damage them. Isengard is actually losing this hardcore. I, this might be literally game over in this situation. Lourdes is getting chunked, but he's now taking a lot of damage from the towers because the rain is active, right? In the meantime, though, I like it. Isengard kind of taking map, but so does Rohan. He even recruits peasants, gives them blades, draft and forge blades, and they are able to, you know, shatter the Isengard citadel into pieces. The good thing for Isengard is he was able to save his combos, that's big. I mean, that he was able to save his heroes, that's big. So Speechcraft is available, he was also able to save this combo, almost level 4, and he should be grip bringing them all into one location and using the Speechcraft ASAP. Get it on cooldown, get it on cooldown. There comes the march. Go to Helm's Deep, leave no one alive moment. Level 8 is the power spike we are looking for for the young wizard Saruman, okay? Willow Saruman is going to give you the potential to go for a risky play without being immediately getting killed, okay? So Rohan has a huge army at the outpost. The elves, they just came to the aid of Rohan, just like in the films Helm's Deep, the Deeping Wall. But in this situation, they are not the defenders, they are actually the invaders. They are here to attack and finally destroy every single Uruk in the existence of Middle-earth. Will they succeed? There comes the Palantir. Palantir will reveal the map. He was able to see the outpost, it's division from Isengard. The peasants are getting slaughtered. Isengard's echo is not looking that good, but he, I mean... He still needs to make army, so you want to fill up your command points as soon as possible. And I'm still a big fan of getting Vorex in this situation. Because look at the minimap. The combos are extremely strong. They are way stronger than Vorex, but they are not as mobile. So you want to use this army to fight your against enemy army. And your Vorex areas you want to use to get map control back. Because Rohan is just getting too rich. He can do whatever he wants. He can recruit at some point Gimli in Legolas 2. And again, here in this situation, he has the chance to just disengage. But it's Saramanet when we need him. I don't, he's coming. Warchan has been used. And you see, here, you can kill this peasant combos through, but you can never catch up to the elves. And committing to the outpost is also very risky because there is a statue, which means even a greater amount of leadership for Rohan. And your reign is on cooldown. So the only way, oh, beautiful bees are ha happening in the meantime. The peasants, look at the peasants! Level 3 peasant. He was able to destroy a furnace. The, um, the other one almost destroyed two. Seven power points for Isengard and six power points for Angel. So he has the potential to go for the for the end summon. And end summon you can place on top of the enemy army too. And the second they trample the Uruks, the same thing is gonna happen. Just like in the films happened. You know, but Treebeard did to the orc. They come to protect Middle Earth. And he's filling up the command points more and more with elves to get as much firepower as he potentially can. We like those. He's gonna unlock the end ally special summon from his spellbook too. And that's gonna be the moment we are looking for. So Isengard is stalling here, waiting for the Freezing Rain to be available and Warchant. He knows without Warchant and especially Freezing Rain, he has, he has no potential to destroy his outpost because elves will out damage them. So what you wanna do, when you use Rain, you need to have like a priority list, okay? You need to destroy the well first. That's your primary target. Because as long as you don't destroy this, they will keep respawning. And every unit respawning will have leadership back. Because rain is always affecting the current army. Alright, the outpost has like one Yeoman Archer. And the pikes are getting slaughtered. Power points from Rohan are rising. And this is gonna be a big fight. We don't wanna miss this. Elves are also outranging you, by the way. There comes the Warchant, Speechcraft, 
and one of them is level 5. You can see the big star on the on the head of the banner carrier. Rain has been activated. So no leadership. But there comes the immediate... Your response should, should be the second you see the end summon. You should... But he was getting focused down. That's why you need to keep your distance. It's not worth to go for a fireball in this situation. But Aragorn has been getting killed. The ends or oh, beautiful um, seat. Palantir to get additional movement speed. Maybe that will help them kill this level 5. It's a free level 5 unit. Don't let them survive. And that's what I was trying to do. Uh, just steal them immediately. Okay? The level 5. If he can survive this, he's gonna be my hero. <laughs> There comes... Uh, oh, but I missed the base rush in the meantime. He destroyed the Uruk pit, actually. That's big. That's big. I mean, Isengard Beast is incredibly durable, okay? Incredibly durable. Does he have Horseman Shields? Yeah, he does. But even then, you want to... You know, the way you want to rush the base at this point of the game is to do it front to back. So you don't want to go in the middle of the base in which every single structure and every single sentry tower is targeting you down. You want to go from the front to back, so only a few of them can shoot you at the same time. Isengard Beast is just way too trouble. And because that's kind of makes sense, because evil factions have no walls, but they got balls of steel, okay? Beautiful. Fireball. Almost level 8. Level 8 again. Massive power spike. Aragorn has been getting killed. 8.5 power points for Angel, and 15 power points for Zemix. Now, here is the thing. If Rohan is the one who has the map control and he gets to summon EOD first, he will automatically win the game. When you play Isengard in this situation, what you want to do is you want to force him to use EOD defensively. Defensively means you destroy his outpost and he uses EOD to clear army, but then he has no EOD to push you back to your castle. If he fights you here and he summons EOD here in the situation, AOD will kill all your army, and his army will destroy every single structure of yours. So you... It, it comes with the time, like the feeling about how many power points can my opponent actually have, you know? When you don't demolish those towers, he will have way faster AOD. Way faster. Aragorn is back in the business, on the level 5, he is having a speech at the Black Gate. The day may come <laughs> when the courage of men feels, or when the courage of the elves feels. It's an elven army. Power points are rising. I like the way he's playing, pressuring from both the sides, very good. Isengard is kind of sandwiched. Oh, he will get EOD here, right? Oh, Turing get one shot. It's Saruman, 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 Saruman is level 8. Heal, heal, heal. He's gonna use the will of Saruman. Aragorn, 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 Aragorn is tied too. Now he has 18 power points, but EOD will be summoned. Now take, take, take a look into the power points from Isengard. The second he's losing his army, the power points will rise. But elves, can Saruman get away though? He has 21 power points. Will he summon uh, Balrog right here? And the answer to this question is yes. You see both the ultimate summons at the same time on your screen. But that's what I was trying to say, you know? The bees from Isengard has been almost completely slaughtered and the EOD was still able to kill the White Wizard Saruman. Urupit is level 3, just get a pikeman up on the field. But Eco from Isengard is looking super bad. And that's the reason my map control will make you either win the game, or if you don't have it, it will make you lose the game. Rohan has the dominance of the map pretty much 24-7. He always did his best to maintain the map control he had since the beginning of the game. Peasants, even in late game, destroying the outpost, giving them forge plates, heavy armor, literally everything what Rohan has to offer has been offered in this game to achieve the map control success. And that's one of the major reasons, not the, not the only reason definitely, but one of the major reasons why Isengard will lose this game. He went for the devastation, he has industry, I mean, Isengard and also evil factions like Mortor have like a lot of tools to get money, that's their specialty, while good factions can summon additional allies, evil can boost their eco, but, you know, when you <laughs> don't, when you give Rohan too much map control, he doesn't need to do this, because he will get money from the farms, you know. Rain is available, he has actually like 
one crossbow man inside the outpost. That's all he has. The bees is falling apart. The rhythm mark, just like in the films, has been able to destroy the Eisen God forces. GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, make sure to leave a like to this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.